<laughs> Hello, this is Andy Orr at Falco Canine Academy. I am live here. Where's the applause at Chrysler's? <laughs> Natural pet supplies. All right, I want <laughs> I want to call it Chrysler's Natural Pet Store, but uh, my daughter who works here. Uh, um, Actually, it was true what she said that when you say pet store, then it sounds like they have pets here. They don't have pets, but they do have some great dog food. They have some great specials. They have great prices, great stuff. Um, and as a matter of fact, one of the first things I want to talk about is the 20% off they have for Honest uh, Kitchen products. And uh, I use Honest Kitchen products currently on the two dogs I have from uh, uh, Ireland, Northern Ireland. Uh, and they're doing well. Their coats are so shiny. I have not <laughs> washed them since I got here uh, because there's no need to. You just got to brush them out. You got to feed them a good food, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later on, making sure that they have a healthy diet. Uh, if you do that with a dog and brush them on a regular basis, the, the washing in uh, soaps and detergents, that kind of thing, is not always the best idea if you do it too often because it washes away their natural oils and that kind of stuff unless you're using a high quality uh, pet shampoo which i'm sure that's one of the things that they carry here a bit but uh back to the the, the food that's on sale here uh 20 off which is a really good deal it's only until the 30th so you have to get in here right away uh but it's um um uh grain free i remember my my uh what it's all about here uh, courtney you got to help me out it's grain free they have beef uh, beef recipes uh, that's dehydrated. It comes in this box. You mix it a little, with a little bit of water. What I do is I, what? Has an oatmeal-like texture, but it's grain-free. So don't get those two confused. And it's human grade. And then you got these uh, proper toppers, which go on, on top of the dog food, what makes it crunchy. If you want a little, if they want a little bit of a crunch that goes along with it. So it's fantastic. And it's super food. Oh, superfoods. These are superfoods that go on top. So dehydrated superfood for dogs. And uh, I can tell you right now, I've seen a difference in the dogs. The dogs have been here for a little over three weeks now, maybe a little bit longer than that. And I'm telling you, I looked out today and the, uh, sh the sun shining on simmering on their shimmering <laughs> on their coat. I am, uh, I'm, I've been around dogs a long time. It really is because of the food. Um, and it looks really, really good. So again, my name is Andy. Uh, I am the owner of Falco Cannon Academy. I also want to make sure and uh, give a shout out to our pet dog trainers. Uh, you, if you need help with your dog, if you want to make your bad dog good or your good dog better, Make sure and get a hold of us over at uh, Falco Canine Academy. Derek and Gina do a fantastic job, and the rest of the team that's there helping them out uh, out there at the field. Uh, and so we uh, have a lot of programs uh, available, uh, whether it's private training, uh, group training, if you want to do bite work with your dogs, or just simply again want to do some uh, you know some tune-ups with your dog, that kind of stuff. Uh, we can handle it. So just give us a call for that. Uh, here, what we're going to be talking about is the ten commandments that a dog owner needs to follow. Uh, with their dog. Now, there are other rules and things like that, but there's th these 10 things I have found over the years have uh, really uh, served me well, served the academy well. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I ran across them. This, you can see, I don't know if you can see this, but the paper is kind of yellow. Uh, this is from a class I taught uh, probably, I want to say five or six years ago. And the same 10 commandments that I have written on here really hold true to today. Um, I have 10 commandments for police dogs and for detection dogs, but these actually can apply to all of them if you just follow them and keep them in mind. Um, again, I'm here at Chrysler's in Brea, California. If you live close, you want to come by and say hi to my daughter, Courtney. She works here. Stephanie, the manager. And uh, who else? Who else works here? Eugenia works here. Natalie and Lauren is working here, but she's the groomer. Uh, and she, the only reason I do that is because she's also going to be working at another store at the same time. So, um, make sure and come by and say hi to the great crew here. It really is a good store. And it's right next to Whole Foods and Whole Foods has a bar and, <laughs> and the grooming is fantastic. You got to get here and get your dog groomed here. Uh, I've already had a, my, a couple of my dogs groomed here and a, a fantastic job. So let's see who's on. We got Christine. Uh, and uh, we got a couple of people on. Oh, Christine uh, actually put down something a little bit earlier. But here's Christine. She's a dog trainer, what I understand. And I believe Christina is, I'm not sure if she's in California or not. I'm not even going to say because I might get it wrong. Um, but she's a dog trainer who's just recently joined us. Uh, Gina, as I mentioned before, our dog trainer. She's fantastic. Uh, she put a little note on there on our um on our page when we were coming on, uh, announcing that we were going to be coming on a little bit later on that she can't wait. So I hope Gina's on right now. She, I'm sure she will let us know pretty soon. 
Yeah. All right, let me get rid of that. All right, so let's get right into our Ten Commandments. I should have did five today and five at another time, but you know we're going to go through all ten right now. The the normal practice would have done five, and uh, I went ahead and got so excited I put all ten out there right away. So I'm going to bring my agenda up here, and as you know, our training system really revolves around. Uh, love and respect for your dog. And so that simply is going to be the very first one. You can't do anything with your dog that will change uh, anything significantly. Um, it is it is actually fairly difficult if you don't have a level of love and respect. Now, you can have, uh, I almost said something that's going to make some people upset, but uh, over the years, uh, understand that I come from a police dog training background, and I have literally seen people beat their dogs into submission, and then the dogs do what has been asked, right? And so the um, the harsh treatment of those dogs, does it work? Does it get a dog to stop doing something? Yes, on occasion, but it doesn't train the dog. It just means in that specific circumstance where the dog is reminded that if he doesn't do it, he may suffer some harsh consequence, the dog may not do it. Uh, the problem is if the dog gets it, it figures out how he gets around that, then it becomes even a bigger problem. And um, uh, one instance could be, and I'll give you an example, is uh, back in the day they used to put a long line on uh, a Belgian Malinois to teach it to uh, call off, which is still done today, and all these things are still done today. Uh, they would then tie the other end of the line to the bumper of one of the police cars. They would send the dog out. The dog would be running at a great speed. Malinois can run very fast. They would call the dog off. That dog would hit the end of that line, do a backflip, and then come back. Well. What I'm talking about, and again, I, I know that you don't like this kind of talk, but it's just simply teaching you because I know that it still happens with even pet dogs, is that what the dog learned, he learned where 30 feet ended, right? And so anytime the dog had the line on, at 30 feet, he would just stop and not do anything, or he might not even go as long as he had the long line on, right? So the dog learned that when he has the long line on, it hurts. When he has a long line on, if he goes uh, 29 feet and stops, then he wins, right? And so the dog with the long, long, long line on would run like a, sometimes like a bolt of lightning up to about 25 feet and then would slow down so that at, at 29 feet he wouldn't get the end of the line. Sometimes he'd stop, sometimes he'd come back and that kind of stuff. And so the dog simply is, on, is has only been trained to understand about the long line, not about calling off on command. Do you see the difference? The dog has learned how to um, work around the equipment because that's what it's all about. It, it hurts when that piece of equipment is on. The dog has not been trained to come back based on respect and love for the handler. Two completely different things, right? So love and respect is a huge, huge um, part of our training. And I think it makes all the difference in the world to have a dog uh, that has special issues like aggression or, uh, you know, just loves people so much that it jumps on them and scratches them and harms them. But he's doing it uh, in a way that's disrespectful. He may love you, but he's being disrespectful by scratching and jumping on you too, till you fall down, whether it's you as a, uh, as a as an adult or a child that may be watching this, that the dog doesn't respect the child. The dog loves the child, right? He loves him so much that he's licking them and, and knocking them over, but that might be part of the fun is that he gets this response by knocking somebody over, but that's not showing respect, right? So love and respect needs to go both ways. The love is going to allow you to train your dog in a way that he can understand and that you have patience and you have consistency and you have good timing. That is what gets you uh, that's what uh, you know. That will get you in regard to love. Is that that timing that you uh, are going? We're going to be talking about a little bit later on because you have more patience for things you love in most most cases, right? All right. So let's go on to the next number two before I beat that one up too much. Okay, this is the three C's. The three C's of clear, concise, and consistent. Clear, concise, and consistent is a is the next huge factor that will make your dog a better dog, make your dog a good dog. Because if you are uh, uh, clear in your message and not wishy-washy. Uh, wishy-washy would be that, uh, well, sometimes he can get on the couch and sometimes he can't. Uh, wishy-washy would be that in dirty clothes, you can jump on me and lick my face and, and try to carve up my body into my arms. But when I'm wearing nice clothes, don't even get close to me. How dare you, you bad dog, right? But when you have the bad clothes on back, hey, well, come on, jump on me, right? And you actually encourage it. That is not clear. That is a very foggy message. The dog goes, Hmm, and now I got to know whether you're wearing nice clothes or, or, or work clothes or, or, you know, like work in the, in the yard clothes. Uh, th that is not a clear message, right? So we want to be clear that if we are teaching a dog not to jump on us and that it, because it's a problem, we have to make sure that we all across the board that there's no jumping on me or anybody else. 
it makes it so much easier for the dog. And some people say, well, you know, sometimes they just want the dog to jump on me and it, because I love him so much and it's okay when I'm wearing, but no, it's hard for the dog. It's, it's not fair for the dog because you're being inconsistent. You're not being clear with your dog. Um, concise, concise is that the dog gets a correction at the moment they're doing something wrong, whether that's verbal or physical. Right. It's at that moment that you're concise in your training. Uh, one of those things that may be that when a dog is um, you're teaching a dog to heal, that, that you'd be you'd not be concise if the dog was not healing and you reach back and you pet the dog. Right. Or you, you lean forward and pet the dog when he's out of position. Right. That's not being concise. The only time the dog gets the pet on the head is when the dog is at that heel position on your left hand side. And then that is when you pet the dog. That's concise. Right. That's concise and clear to the dog. Uh, and consistent is that it's all across the board and it's with everybody that lives in the house, right? You got to be consistent with your dog, no matter who your dog is with at what time of the day and no matter what it is you're wearing, clear, concise, and consistent. All right, let's go to number two or number three. So sorry, uh, confident and sincere voice. And uh, one of the best ways to get your dog all riled up is by getting into a very scary, mean or yelling or screaming type of voice. Well, ah, stop doing that. Stop doing that. And the dog uh, it reacts to that. And often it causes the dog, if he's fearful, to be more fearful. It adds energy sometimes to a very negative situation. If your dog is getting into a fight and you go running over there, stop it, stop it. And you're very loud in your voice and very uh, um, uh, uh, mean and scary, uh, it, it can actually feed into the aggression, into the anxiety that the dog uh, has and what caused the fight in the first place or caused the, uh, um, uh, the, the discomfort uh, in the first place. It's because of your voice and your actions that causes that to, to probably even make it worse. So try to be confident and sincere in your words at all times, no matter what it is that's going on. Uh, as a police officer, I learned that that, that uh, you know the better that I was at controlling my voice, that the dog would actually follow my directions, even in a heightened uh, situation, if I was always in a clear and concise voice. <laughs> and so when I would say heal or heal, the dog would heal no matter what voice I was using. If you're constantly using a loud voice or a very screamy voice to get things done, that is possibly the only time that dog will do something, right, also. And so you don't want to be like that when you're on in public and say, heal, come here and scream. Uh, when you're in public and people are watching, you want the dog to respond in your normal, uh, confident, and uh, sincere voice. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So keep that in mind as you are out with your dog and when you're dog with your dog at home that you're not yelling the commands and making it uh, obvious that you are uh, angry or upset at your dog. All right. Number four. Uh, same at home and away. You want uh, always your um, your uh, consistency with your training, with your voice, with your commands, with your expectations. Always to be the same, uh, no matter if you're at home or away. All right. Uh, we learn that. Uh, hopefully, many of us learn that with our children. If we are very strict at home uh, and demand certain things from our children, but then when we're out in public, we kind of get them, let them get away with more because we don't want to look like the, the mean person or we don't want somebody to think that we um, uh, are angry people towards our children. Um, then what's going to end up happening is that your kids are going to behave somewhat at home and they're going to be out of control monsters out in a restaurant or at a grocery store because that's what happens. If you make sure that they understand that the same rules apply whether you're at home or away, then they, you will have consistency with behavior home and away. Same thing with your dog. Right? You want to make sure that it's, con, it's consistent between home and away, that no matter what, you, your expectation is high for them to be um, uh, good dogs, to be good citizens, and not to jump on people, whether you're in your house or at a grocery store. All right, number five. I like this new thing on Be Live TV. It allows me to put an agenda up here for you guys. Five, a dog must be a dog. That's one thing you have to remember. There's, there's some people that now that I told you all about this training thing and being consistent and expectations, that there is a time that your dog needs to be a dog, right? You don't want to sit there uh, all day long expecting your dog to be a robot, that he needs to sit and hold a sit for long periods of time or down and uh, always be at your side and always, uh, you know, be uh, basically a statue. Right. But there are those times that you want your dog to simply be who he is as a dog. If you have a Labrador retriever that needs to run and play and, 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 and jump around, then you have to find that opportunity and make sure that's built into the training. That when you're uh, being uh, focused on your expectations, that maybe after about 10 minutes, you allow your dog to then go to the end of the line, 
pull, you know, and go to a tree and go pee, smell the ground and kind of run around like a, mani a maniac for a little while and then come back to the training. So the dog feels like you respect him. If, uh, if you're not showing respect, that means that you want your dog to be a statue or a robot uh, and, and try to, to be a dog at the same time. And it, it's impossible for a dog to be happy and to feel love and respect from you if your expectations are too high. Right. So under certain circumstances and, and at the right time, uh, allow your dog to be a dog, to do the things that dogs normally do and uh, that make a dog a dog. All right. And so allow that to be an opportunity uh, for your dog to feel respect from you that you allow him to be a dog or her to be a dog. All right. Now, we talked about this a little bit earlier when we were talking about the honest chick, uh, chicken, <laughs> the honest kitchen, is that we want good nutrition. This is a great nutritional value to your dog, high nutritional value. It used to be back in the day, I remember when I had the dog, that my mom and dad would go to um, the, uh, what was the name of that store, the grocery store, the something basket. Anybody know? Anybody on that can answer me really quick? Uh, something basket in La Mirada. You know, they would carry some of the, you know, you know, good old Roy dog food or something like that. Or, um, and I don't want to give any, I'm trying not to give any brand names that were big back in the day. Okay. Chuck wagon. Uh, and so they would go get Chuck wagon, which was like, uh, you know, $2 for 10, uh, 15 pounds of dog food. And then, uh, maybe uh, $20 for a hundred pounds of dog food. And you can imagine what was in that food and nothing. It was basically cardboard with a little bit of coloring Right? But that's not the case today. There are some really good dog foods. Most of them here are at Chrysler's. Probably all of them are here at Chrysler's. The best dog foods and the best treats that you can get for your dog and even your cat. Not much of a cat person, but <laughs> you, <laughs> you can have some of the best dog food by coming to Chrysler's, and that is, it's worth it. If you have to pay a little bit more for great dog food, what that does is save you money. In a couple ways, uh, it, the the poop actually is smaller if you're feeding them a good quality dog food. It's not the uh, you're not wasting your money in poop because what happens is the food just goes right through them and out, and the very little nutritional value goes in there. You can actually feed them less than you do of a non nutritional dog food. Uh, it'll also keep you out of the vet. You won't have the skin problems, the intestinal. Uh, track problems, the uh, digestive problems that you have by feeding a poor dog food. Uh, I actually change out dog food flavors. Uh, that Back in the day, I remember, no, you have to keep it on that one dog food and they stay on that one dog food because if you change it, they're going to get sick. If a dog gets used to that, that, that flavor change and that uh, the protein change and uh, some of the other changes that come by changing dog food, uh, the dog will get used to it and the dog will, will flourish. The dog will not have to eat McDonald's every day. Uh, and we know what happens when you eat McDonald's every day. We, we saw it in the movie, right? So a good nutritional dog food that you're changing up the proteins and some of the, um, the tastes and flavors, the dog will be much happier. Uh, the dog's nutritional health will be uh, a lot better, and the behavior will be better. There's so many behavioral issues that are, are because of bad nutrition that you'll see that sometimes just changing their dog food will actually improve on your dog's behavior, uh, and that is well known. Look at us. Well, if we don't eat right, we're crabby, we're cranky, we don't perform as well. The same thing with a dog. All right. Uh, number seven. Spend time with your dog. Okay, so this is hard if you don't have a good dog, right? What happens is, is when you have a dog who is constantly knocking people over, barking and growling at the kid skateboarding down the street or chasing the next dog as it, as it goes by, uh, what ends up happening is you just say, you know what, I want to go for a walk, but I was thinking about taking the dog, but nah, it's too embarrassing. It's too much work. It hurts because the dog pulls and uh, I just don't like it. And so what ends up happening is you spend very little time with your dog. So the key to spending more time with your dog is to make sure that you're doing good training with your dog, have high expectations, have a loving and respectful relationship with your dog, and you will spend more time with your dog. And it's good for both of you um, because spending time with the dog actually has been, has been proven through uh, studies at uh, universities that it will lower your blood pressure. Uh, your health in general is, is much better when you're around a dog and you're actually more sociable when you're with a dog. And because you, you get out in walks with uh, the dog out of parks, you go to dog parks, you do a bunch of stuff. Speaking of dog parks, we have our program, uh, Dog Park Etiquette. You're going to want to make sure and, and get that program. I'll put a link on it later on. Uh, but the, when you spend time with your dog, you actually become more sociable. Uh, and so it's good for both of you. Spend more time with your dog, but you can only do that probably if your dog is well-trained and you have a loving and respectful relationship with your dog. All right, that's number seven. Number eight, 
listen to your dog. We know the dogs don't talk unless you're Dr. Doolittle, but dogs will tell you so much through their body language. As you're walking on with your dog and you're paying attention, you're listening to your dog, your dog will tell you so much. The dog will tell you that uh, he's about ready to become aggressive. The dog will tell you that he's becoming fearful. The dog will tell you that he doesn't uh, like how you're treating him. The dog will tell you whether he feels well or not. Listen to your dog, no matter what it is you're doing. That will allow you to make good decisions about your dog. It will allow you to have, again, a better relationship with your dog because now you're communicating back and forth. You're going to learn how to uh, the, listen to your dog in the sense that, he, uh, that you're actually listening to him. How much better is your relationship uh, when you are listening to the other person, right? That often get, comes up in uh, counseling meetings that, uh, or, you know, counsel, counseling sessions uh, that the other spouse just wants you to listen to them. Please, I just want him to listen to me or I just want her to listen to me uh, and uh, I want better communication. If you have good communication between you and your dog, uh, there's no way of not having a better relationship because you're going to know what the dog is trying to tell you and the dog will respond much better. All right, number nine is understand your dog's point of view or dog's view. I don't know why I didn't say point of view. Your dog's point of view is is obviously different than yours. A dog is about a foot and a half off the ground, foot and a half foot off the ground. You are from anywhere from about four and a half feet to six feet, and even there might be somebody out there that's seven foot, right? That perspective, that point of view is much different than a dog. And so in some cases, you have to understand that that a dog does kind of need to jump up on something to look at something, but that doesn't make it okay. Understand why it's happening and then correct it or help the dog get into a different position so he does not have to jump, right? Or when you're going upstairs, a dog's point of view is that he, he can see through it and it looks like it's this thin, whatever it is he's about to step on. He doesn't look up and look down and see that it's flat and about a foot wide, right? So going upstairs, he can see through. You have to understand that it, it scares a dog and he gets worried. And so you have to show a dog how to go upstairs that he can see through. So understanding that his point of view is different will help you and help the dog overcome some situations like that or obstacles like that. Um, some dogs have difficulty jumping in the back of the truck and we go, well, come on dog, just jump in the back of the truck. But remember from about a foot and a half in most trucks, the dog is looking at the underside of that, uh, of the, um, the back of the truck and um, cannot understand it. And again, if he even gets up there, he looks and he sees this thing darting out and to the dog, it doesn't make sense. So he doesn't see the things that we see in the same way that we see them. Um, and back to a police dog story. I remember a time when a police officer was calling me at about three o'clock in the morning and he was so angry at me or at his dog. And he called me and says, I don't understand. We were in pursuit of this vehicle. Uh, when the suspect kind of uh, pulled over to the side of the road, finally, because he ran out of gas, he opens the door and takes off and runs. And then when I went to go send the dog after him, uh, he didn't run after him. He went into the car that the guy just abandoned. And he was so mad. How come the dog didn't chase after the bad guy or chase after the suspect? And I and I had to remind the officer that, hey, wait a minute. Could you? How did you see the guy running away? Well, I could see, you know, over the car. I can see him running down the freeway. Well, understand the dog coming out of the back of that patrol car would ought immediately lose sight of that suspect because now the door is open, right? You're on the freeway, and the suspect's running down the freeway on the shoulder of the road in front of the vehicle that he was just in. And so it's impossible for the dog to see that man or that it would be a woman if it was, you know, or, or if it was a woman, it could not see him because of his perspective. He could not see through the car. He could not see through the door and the guy was running down the freeway. And so the dog naturally saw the opening of the car and jumped in. So understanding a dog's point of view is a huge factor in not only pet dogs, but also police dogs. All right. And the last one, number 10. Well, I'm exhausted. Uh, and this is really uh, important, and that's, uh, oops, oh, have fun in all you do. Sorry, I didn't look like it went up there. Have fun with your dog. If you're not having fun with your dog, again, it's really hard to do training. Um, when you go out to train with your dog, then you want to look for that opportunity to have fun with your dog. Begin to challenge yourself. If you've been working on a sit-stay, um, the next step would be how long can I get the dog to sit-stay? Um, how long can I get the dog to sit stay while I'm dancing on the tennis ball? How long can I get the dog to sit stay while I'm throwing a tennis ball, right? And so you want to begin to have fun with the behaviors you're training so that you will stay consistent in your training, so that you will continue in the training, that you don't give up. Uh, if you need to back up, have fun in the sense that you had to back up. Maybe you go, ah, oh, man, we just went a little bit too far. Let's back up a little couple steps, and now let's work towards that end goal, which will be able to bounce the tennis ball and throw it while he stays in a sit, and then tell him to go get it at the appropriate time and have fun with it. 
Um, if it's simply waiting at the door, then open the door. You walk outside, go to the curb, and walk back, and him still sitting there at the door would be a great challenge and a great test to work up to. So trying to figure out little games you can play to make it more fun to spend time with your dog is a really, really great day to make training a lot more fun for both you and your dog because you're doing things that will allow it to continue on and to go forward. All right, so those are the top 10. I got people crawling on the ground next to me. <laughs> Again, what I want to do is let you know that I'm a Chrysler's natural pet. Oh, your first groom is 20% off. Make sure and come here and get your first groom. It would be worth it just to get your dog groomed to get 20% off. And who knows, um, you may want to come back. And I'm, I can almost guarantee you that you will. Uh, the people here are fun and, and great to be with. Um, the address here is 3341 East Imperial Highway, Brea, California. That's 3341 East Imperial Highway. And it's in Brea, California. I wonder if I can type that fast enough so that it can be on here. Uh, I can do it. I know I can. 33, 41, East, Imperial. I'm usually not holding a mic. Highway, Brea. Right. Oops. Highway. And it's in the comment section, so if you need the address, there it is. It's in the comment section. Uh, again, come, make sure and come down here to see Lauren. She's a great groomer. Uh, got, got to know uh, Lauren here. She's a good friend of my, my daughter's. She does a great job. She loves doing what she's doing. And, again, 20% off is fantastic. It, it, it doesn't hurt. It's a, it's a great uh, deal to come down here, get your dog groomed, get it looked after, taken care of, and then uh, you will be a, uh, you'll be sold on, on being here at Chrysler's uh, and and use all natural pet beauty products. What else? You know, you might as well just come on, ha on camera. <laughs> can you believe that I have a daughter, me, have a daughter that wasn't, doesn't want to come on camera with me? I can stand here in front of the camera. That's okay with her, but she's not gonna come on. Uh, she's got a great shirt on that says goat milk, because you guys sell goat milk here. Y'all, 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 you sell uh, goat milk. Here, this is fantastic right over here in the not the freezer in the refrigerator section um they got uh, raw dog food uh package they got primal uh we got stella and chewies which i love and they have new kibble inside this oh they have a new kibble stella and chewies oh here we come we come with a prop how, how old is this when does this come out nice Stella and chewies has a kibble now who knew i didn't even know they were coming out with that Coated with raw, oven baked, raw, and they're what? They're coming out with another one that has raw bits in it. Stella and Chewy's has always been good. I've never had uh, anything negative ever to say about uh, Stella and Chewy's. I've always loved this dog food. All right, another one. Small breed chicken recipe, raw coated kibble. It says right there on the package, raw coated kibble. All right, <laughs> cage-free recipe. Cage-free. If you care about animals not being in cages, you got cage-free food out here. Stella and Chewy's, uh, only the good stuff, raw blend. Freeze-dried raw, baked kibble. Fantastic. Quail, duck, chicken. What? Cage-free. How do they catch those ducks if they're cage-free? Do they tie their little feet? No. <laughs> they don't. They don't. All right. Thank you. Anything else? What else am I missing? They have uh, bully sticks. They got uh, the, the, the trachea, which is dogs love the trachea. Uh, all their food will never have corn, soy, or byproducts. Never. And nobody's telling me to say that. What? All the edible food? <laughs> All of our edible food. <laughs> Everything is made in the United States, Canada, or New Zealand. Very nice. Uh, well, you know, one of the issues is that in a, uh, well, we'll just say China. China, some of the dog food that's been made over there, that is what caused many of the problems, which has been, in a way, there's always something good that comes out of very something that's very tragic. And we've had dogs that got sick and died back uh, several years ago when the food was not being made properly. Uh, much of the food out of China was causing dogs to get sick enough to die. Uh, but the good thing that comes out of the tragedy is that now we really 
take care of our dogs. We now look and want to know where the dog's uh, uh, food is being manufactured. Uh, the United States and Canada and New Zealand are great places uh, that uh, take really good care of their animals and the creation of their dog foods. You have so many people that are creating new formulas, new dog foods, uh, new ways of feeding the dog, raw and natural. We have our program. Also, uh, in the Falco Canine Academy website, uh, about how to feed your dog raw and natural. So, you could do a little bit of a combination of uh, Stella and Chewies and maybe um, who else we got over there? Primal, uh, and then mix that with uh, your own raw diets. And again, I, I am a, a promoter of varying the th things that your dogs are eating. I think it's fantastic for dogs, uh, unless, and, and you might want to check with your vets, but you want to make sure and uh, give them good, healthy. Um, foods, but it's okay to change it. It really is. Back, I, just when I started dog training, it was like the, the worst thing you could possibly do is change your dog's dog, dog food because, oh, my dog's going to get sick. It's horrible. But if your dog grows up on the ever-changing um, uh, formulas and um, uh, flavors, the proteins and that kind of stuff, your dog's system will actually love it. They'll flourish. Um, again, a good natural uh, diet is fantastic for your dogs. It's good for their behavior and makes the dogs much better. All right. So that is it. I have consistently had some people staying on here, and we have not lost anybody. But they don't want to comment. Anybody have a comment before I sign off? Anything else you want to know about Chrysler's? Um, my daughter has worked here for two years. Two years? Have you been here, Courtney? What? Two years have you been here? Me? Yes. Year and a half, and uh, I have tested out probably most of the dog food here. Uh, I, I've been a fan, like I said, of Stella and Chewy's for a long time, um, and. and um, what, open Farm. Open Farm is another great dog food. You saw me interview the owners of Open Farm at uh, Super Zoo, which I will be at in July, um, and interviewing some more people out there. So you're going to want to make sure and stay tuned for all those interviews. Uh, but I did interview Open Farm. Another, they care about their packaging and how it affects the environment. They care about the, you know a cage free. They care about uh, how the food is manufactured and what additional ingredients are in there. Another great dog food that's sold here at Chrysler's. Um, Chrysler's always has some kind of special uh, that uh, you can count on. I, I wouldn't say I, I, I don't know the stores that well to say that they have one every day, but there are there are enough that you want to make sure and pay attention to their website and their Facebook page and just simply call the store. Call the store again at uh, I didn't know if I I don't know if I said the phone number. Six five seven. Why is there a six five seven area code here? <laughs> six five seven area code. I'll put that in the comment section too. Six. There's got to be at least. I see that people are on. You guys have no comments whatsoever. There's got to be some comment. Either I'm doing a very fantastic job, or your or your keyboard is broken. Two seven six six. All right. The phone number is in here. Six five seven four 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 two seven. Oops. I almost sent a bad phone number. Oh no. Six six. It's correct. All right. It is in the comment section. Just make sure and give them a call. Ask them anything about their grooming. Uh, ask them about the 20% off on your first grooming uh, session here. Uh, we've got the 20% off of uh, The Honest Kitchen. That is up until the 30th, so make sure and get in here and get some of the food. Another, Again, I've been feeding this to the dogs from Northern Ireland. Their coats look fantastic. It looks like the dogs have been washed every day. They have not. They look fantastic. They're just brushed, feeding a good nutritional diet. And the, the shine that I'm getting uh, on their coat, which is a really often a good sign of, uh, of good nutrition, um, and their health. The only thing is I can't keep up with the amount of calories they're burning. I mean, I, mean, I need, they eat the, the amount of food for a hundred pound German shepherd, <laughs> but they've been working so hard running around in the backyard and actually like eating the pool hose. They ate the pool hose. Uh, uh, I'm sure that that burns a lot of calories. Yes. Oh, uh, look at that. There's going to be a booth here for the park walk, park walk. Bark walk. I can read. I promise you. The bark walk on July 22nd uh, dog costume contest. And it's going to be at Kramer Park at 201 North Bradford Avenue, Placentia, California. And the lots of samples. So I come down and get, you know, I used to be in the dog food company. I don't know if you guys remember uh, uh, Canine Caviar. We used to deliver people's homes. And uh, I would do these events where we would give away dog food. And I would see the same people come every 15 minutes to to get dog food, they would change and put a different hat on and act like a different person and get free freaking samples. Oh, and I would have to give it, we'd give it away because we promised that we were giving away samples. And occasionally we had to say, dude, you've been here 10 times. You got a whole bag of my stinking dog food, but they're going to give away free samples. So <laughs> don't get any bright ideas. Don't bring five different hats. 
and wear a hat, a different hat every time you get dog food. But here at the Park Walk, uh, July 22nd, let's see if I can get that close enough for you to read without the shine on it. Whoa, up, up, up. There we go. All right, at Kramer Park, 201 North Bradford Avenue in Placentia. Bring the whole family, it says here. Um, and it's to do what? They're going to have a park walk, I guess. It's, is there any... I was wondering if there's anything else in there about where the the where they're raising money for something else. Free giveaways. There's probably charities there and some other stuff. So, all right, go to the Bark Walk there in Placentia, California. All right, so I, I must be doing a fantastic job. You guys have no questions. I've covered it all. The Ten Commandments: love and respect, clear, concise, consistent, confident, sincere voice. Same at home and away. A dog must be a dog. Allow your dog to be a dog. That's the one thing we get caught up in. We're doing our dog training is that we forget to give the dog a break and allow him to be a dog. Number six is good health and nutrition. Come here to Chrysler's for good health and good uh, nutrition. Uh, they can answer any question you might have. They even have uh, leashes and collars and harnesses, which I don't like for training, so don't get a harness. Um, and they have <laughs> uh, all the other stuff you can get. Uh, food. Uh, what's uh, huh? Grooming supplies, and again, they have a groomer here. Um, spend time with your dog. Uh, listen to your dog. And remember, your dog has a different point of view than you do at, at a foot or so, or even smaller, maybe six inches off the ground, than you do at five feet or six feet. And then make sure you have fun with your dog. If you're training your dog well and you have a good relationship with your dog, you're going to have good fun with your dog. So have that fun with your dog. Yes. And supplements. You can get supplements here. All right. That is it for Andy. Here at Chrysler's at Falco Canine Academy uh, Facebook page live. Make sure and share, uh, like, and subscribe to our Facebook page. That way you can get announcements when we're going to come on. Uh, trust me, not all of our broadcasts will be this long. Again, I should, probably should have did five and then five another day. But we went through all ten uh, and uh, because I promised you that I would. All right. Hope that's uh, been good for you guys. Again, thank you, Christine and Gina, for joining us. And uh, we will see you at the next. Oh, and thank you for Stephanie for allowing me to come here and do a live broadcast from Chrysler's Natural Pet. That's it. It's just Natural Pet. There's nothing after that. Chrysler's Natural Pet. I don't know. It feels like there should be something after. But it's not on the card. It just says Chrysler's Natural Pet. They're lucky that they have a great store, great employees, and great products here because it's that it's it's like you're shopping inside of a pet. Oh my god. All right, that's it. What? I will see you at the next one. Take care. Oh bye. <laughs> uh, it's not rough. I'm still on.